Welcome to Operation Self Reset, episode number 96. Now it's time to reset your life. Welcome back to Operation Self Reset, episode number 96. Again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for joining me on this special episode. As you know, Operation Self Reset is all about helping you change. If you want to change, you must change first. And truly, that is the mantra of this podcast. We all want to enhance our life financially, spiritually, relationships, love, joy, happiness, just having good old fashioned fun. And the only way to change that is, or the only way to get to that is to change our own personal self. And that what kind of is the baseline of this podcast. So I commend you. I applaud you. Thank you very much for uh, joining me because as you know, there are a lot of distractions in your life. And if you want to get ahead or if you want to be fulfilled, deeply fulfilled, the only way to do that is for yourself to change. As you may know, in the last couple of podcasts, I have been giving out my cell phone number and I am getting swarmed by the texts and phone or phone calls and I appreciate it. I love the support. I love the questions. I love all the things you guys are throwing at me. And I thought actually maybe a different way to approach instead of just getting my cell phone out there, which I'm going to continue to do because I'm doing something different and I want to connect with you, the listener, I'm thinking about having you guys just send me questions and then I can answer them on the podcast because it's kind of a two for one. You get your answer or you get the answer that you want because you're asking a good question. And then also to the listener who may not have the time or is a little too nervous to ask a question, they were, they're reaping the benefits too. So it's kind of a, we all help each other because that's one thing that I personally enjoy is, is teamwork. My whole life I've been a part of team sports. I played football and hockey. Hockey is still very true and near and dear to my own personal uh, life. But now in my professional life as the fire department, Um, You know, I cannot complete anything alone. Every time we go into a burning building, every time we go into a scenario where there's a lot of unknowns, we go, it's called the two, two in, two out. Two people in, two people out. We never go alone. We always work as a team. And I remember I was talking to a lady at a Tony Robbins event, actually, and she she stopped me. She goes, Jake, why do you keep on speaking about your job as the fire department? Why not you just state like I or the firefighter or whatever? And it, and it kind of kicked me in the teeth a little bit. I wasn't expecting a question like that. And I said, well, you know, to be honest, I think it's just kind of built within us. We know that we cannot succeed if we're not a part of the team. I cannot put out a fire by myself. I cannot go into a burning building and rescue somebody. And I guess to to really hit this home, and I don't think I ever shared this story before, it was three o'clock in the morning and there was a, a call for a structure fire. And the... I'm trying to. Th- the reason why I'm struggling with this is because I'm trying to think where should I start. I guess I'll start at the beginning, and I never share too much of the fire department, but I'm going to start in injecting that into this. And to give you a realm of the firehouse, we sleep there. We're there 24 hours. We work from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. We eat lunch and dinner there, and throughout the day, the only time we get to leave the firehouse is when somebody calls 911. So on this special occasion, I was in a two-tiered firehouse. So that means that the apparatus, the fire trucks are on the first floor along with the kitchen and offices and upstairs is the bunks and where everybody sleeps. So around three o'clock in the morning, a tone came in and the alarm that sounds um, for us to get out of bed is frightening. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a solid tone. It's like a boo and it's, it goes right to your core. And, and to be honest, we're trained to react to that noise. Uh, we have two different tones. One is a, like a and that means like an EMS, car crash, trouble breathing, somebody's having a baby, you know, something like that. And then a fire tone means something's really serious, like something's really happening. Um, a fire, um, you know, explosion, hazmat runs, hurt runs. I'll get more into that in a little bit. But nonetheless, uh, it's like three o'clock in the morning, tone comes in, run out of bed, run downstairs. As we're running down to the apparatus of the fire truck, there is a computer voice that tells us what we're going on, the address and location of the incident, and other information we should know about. So for this, it said structure fire, and it named off all of the regs. Engine 34, engine 24, engine 13, truck uh, 12, truck 9, truck 3, rescue 2, battalion 2, battalion 1, med 16. Now that's 10 different units coming to one structure fire. Now a structure fire is basically a residential home 
that has a fire in it. So going to the rig, we all gear up, and within about uh, 45 seconds, we are fully encapsulated in our gear. As we're driving to the run, we have our SCBA bottles, which are our breathing apparatus, built into the rig, and we put them on like a backpack. backpack. And as we're responding to the fire dispatch a live person is giving us more information and they updated the information they said we got multiple calls stating that there is a person trapped a child trapped on the second floor and I was on the rig that day that was closest to the fire so that means I was first in and when we turned the corner actually when we came down the street you could already see the smoke billowing it was a perfectly clear night but it was like a thick thick rubbery smoke just pumping out of this house and I was like oh man we got something big and knowing that there was a child trapped in that structure everybody's adrenaline kicks up tenfold because we know that there is truly a life danger majority of the fires that we go to there's nobody trapped inside of these houses it's usually somebody started they're outside oh my gosh it's in the kitchen or whatever and we go on and put it out not a big deal but when we know that somebody's trapped in there everybody just goes to that level 10 we're jacked up you know where we're like laser focused so we we go down the street, I see the smoke pouring out, or I see the smoke over the, the houses, and I'm like, oh man, we got something. We turn the corner, and the front door was wide open. It was a two-story house, um, older, built probably around the 60s, um, vinyl siding, white, uh, you know, the it, it had like flowers in the front. I mean, it, I, I can picture it like it was yesterday in my, my mind, and all I recall is that there's two uh, uh, older woman and a gentleman out front, and the front door was wide open, and that front door was pumping out smoke like an old-fashioned steam engine. I mean, it was pushing. Now, for us as firefighters, we read smoke, we read fire, we read a lot of different things when it comes to going into uh, burning buildings. And when you see smoke that dark and toxic that is pumping at a high volume rate, you know this bad boy, this house, is ready to just light up from, from stem to stern, as in a flashover, which means everything in the house heats up to the level of right before ignition, and then it just lights up. So knowing that, I was like, oh my gosh. So I run out of the rig. I, I get on the radio. I tell them what's going on. What do we have? Where, you know, where we're location and what I'm going to do. I see the fire in the rear of the house. They had, they added on an extension. It was like in the living room kitchen in the back. And I run up to the, the people out front. And I said, where is the child trapped? And she pointed upstairs. Now, if you were to be there with me, visualize this. The door is in the middle of the building. Up, look up to the second floor. On the left-hand side, there's three windows. On the right-hand side, there's one window. So when she pointed up, I automatically assumed she was in the front room to the left. And I said, where are the stairs? Because there's no way that I'm going to find those stairs quick enough to get access to the second floor and save this, this child. And she goes right up the front, right through that front door where that smoke is pumping out. And I said, uh, all incoming companies... Uh, engine 34 is going uh, rescue mode. We're going through the front door, second in engine, take the line, extinguish the fire in the rear. And me and my partner, which was the young guy at the time, because the senior firefighter was laying out a line to the back, and the HEO, the driver, was trying to get water. I said, mask up as fast as you can. We're going in. So we drop all our, we drop on our knees, and we put our mask on. We we put our hood on, helmet, all that stuff, gloves back on, and we shoot up those stairs like like a rocket. And you cannot, literally, you cannot see the hand in front of your face. I mean, it's like, it's almost if you had a visor, you had your windshield wipers and somebody poured paint on it and you would try to wipe, you know, turn on your wiper blades, but it was just smearing the paint. It wasn't helping. You couldn't see anything still. So you, you know, you would just have to pull over the road. And that's how it is when you go into these buildings. And not only that, but the intense heat and you can just feel that smoke and soot just seep into you. It's a really unique feeling. But so we shoot up the the floor, the stairs to the second floor. We take a left and we make our way to the front bedroom. And I'm thinking to myself, my gosh, I'm gonna find a dead child. I'm gonna find a child. I'm I'm thinking to myself, this is the worst case scenario. Like this house is ready to just blow up with fire. The amount of smoke in that place, there's no way that this this child would be able to survive. We we hustle to that front room. We start doing a left hand search pattern. That means we we stick to the left wall and we we make our way into like a circle and we we try to cover everything that we can and me and my partner are screaming at each other trying to talk because now that there's other crews on scene and they're breaking windows they're trying to open up things they're extinguishing the fire 
It's organized chaos. And me and my partner cannot find this child in the front bedroom. We just couldn't do it. And I was like, where the heck is this kid? Where She told me it's in the left bedroom. I, I'm just like, okay, it's right. We have to find. We're flipping over the mattresses. We're pulling down the drapes. We're pulling, you know, going in the closet. We're ripping everything out. And we cannot see anything. So we're just feeling for touch. We're just trying to find something, not to get graphic, but kind of squishy. You know, a, a body that that is laying limp. You Truly, you're just kind of just laying there. So, um we, we ended up, we could not locate the body in that front room, but luckily, thank the Lord, there was another crew that came up the stairs right after us, and they went to the right bedroom, and in the middle of the room, there was the child. They scooped her up, they ran outside, and knock on wood, she survived. Um, we were able to do CPR, clear her lungs, get her going. Um, obviously, at the hospital, they did a lot more things, but she was able to, to live another day, and um, it was all because of us going left allowed a crew to go right. And at first, I was really disappointed. I really thought to myself, my gosh, Jake, you're a fool. Why didn't you go right? Like, you know, but I was thinking, she said left. You know, I'm, I'm really like, man, I'm like irritated. Like, how could she tell me left when the kid was right? But it made me realize as a team member that if I didn't go left, it wouldn't allow those guys to go right. And if I would have gone right, you know, of course, I would have been able to possibly uh, find her a lot quicker. But... I know that I'm part of a team. I know that I can't do this alone. I know that I need the rest of the guys on different crews from coming from different firehouses to do their job to the best that they can so we can accomplish a task to our fullest ability. And that was a really gut punch moment when I thought to myself, I was disappointed. I was sad and angry and like, man, I, I should have grabbed her. I should have went right. You know, should have, would have, could have. But it made me realize that I need to lean on other people because my strengths are... Are, are acting very quickly, but also my strengths are knowing that I can't do this alone and staying with my partner and searching that room and tearing it apart and feeling frustrated, but knowing that another crew was able to go and get that child was obviously a huge save. It, that was a big victory, right? I mean, we were able to you know take a, a child that was in distress in a burning building and bring her outside and, and she was able to live. So what I'm getting to is that we, you, me, and all of us that are listening to this right now are truly a team. I don't want to separate myself. I'm not better than you. I'm not smarter than you. I'm just a guy that is intensely in love with figuring out what can I do to enhance my life. And obviously, if you listen this far, you're doing the same. So um, I want to reach out to you and say, if you have a question for me directly, Jake, you know what? I'm having a problem with this. Jake, I, I, I got to figure out what's going on over here. Send it to me in a text message. If it's a great question, if it's a good question, if it's a mediocre question, I'm going to provide it on the podcast and help the rest of the audience, right? So text me, 414-550-4012, and I will read them on the podcast. So the reason why I'm saying that is because today we have three three questions from different people around the U.S. Um, that, um, that have really kind of thought, right, oh, they opened my eyes to different uh, to different things that maybe I haven't covered, and I think it's a really good starting point. So let's start with question number one. This is from Ronald Robb. He's in Maine. He asks, what is the first step, step to change? Is it removing the people around you? Is it removing things? And that was a tough question because what is the first step, right? I mean, we all want to change, right? But, you know, how do we get started? It's like, I want to lose 50 pounds, but where do I start? You know, I want to I want to start being happy, but how the heck do I become happy? The thing that I told Ronald, and, and again, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not an expert. I'm not a guru. I'm a guy that's just in love with this stuff and trying to figure it out and, and testing and, and digesting and talking to different people. And the thing that I realized is that it's not what you have to remove first. It's actually the person that you need to become. So think of it as this. If you want to lose 50 pounds, find somebody that you know that has lost 50 pounds. What did they do? How did they get started? Emulate that person. That is the first step. You don't need to change anything. You don't need to just start wiping out your cupboards and go and sign up for a membership. First of all, find somebody that has done it, that is living a happy, fulfilling life. Somebody that is just joyful. Somebody that has energy that you want Somebody that has created a successful business or has a great idea that they brought to market or whatever it is, emulate them. Be, start to become that person. Not, you know, not completely change yourself. Be still who you are, but understand what, did, what, you know, 
why are they doing what they're doing? Why did they become that person? And then everything else will, around you will change. So once you find out that Susie down the street, you know, lost 50 pounds, you're like, wow, I, I want to see, you know, what, what did she do? So you start checking out, you know, the things that are going on, you know, the food that she has in her cupboards, you know, the things that she does on the weekends. What does she do at night when she gets home? What does she do when she has those sweet cravings, all that stuff? Talk to her, digest her, read about her. You know, I don't know if she's in a book or a magazine or whatever and, and identify those key components and then implement that into your own life. So once you do that, then you go, well, Susie doesn't have ice cream in her house. Well, I got all this ice cream. I should get rid of the ice cream. So you didn't start by getting rid of the ice cream. You you saw somebody that was successful at whatever it is you wanted, and so then you just emulated it, and you started removing things. And then you could potentially remove people, you know, remove people that aren't um, into the health now. You know what I mean? Just like things like that. So if you want to, you know, the first step in true change is figuring out who the heck the person that that you want to become. Find somebody that has done it, still stay true to you, and emulate it. Copy them. Success leaves clues. That's the best thing. So, Ronald, hopefully that helps you out, buddy. Uh, the next question, uh, Christy Hong, uh, she is going for a doctorate, I want to say. Um, nonetheless, she's curious about goals and vision boards. And I'll start with the vision board. Number one, vision board, I think, is really huge. It allows you to create a space it can be on a cork board, it could be a corner in your basement, it could be a, a mirror that you decorate, whatever it is, of news articles, clippings, of pictures, um, uh, uh, photos from old vacations, uh, whatever it is, whatever materialistic thing that you can hold, like a clipping or a picture, a news article, something you printed offline, and put it in a place that reminds you of the person you want to become or the things that you want to generate in your own personal life. Now, for me, I have... A vision board, and on that vision board, I have pictures of um, Hawaii. I, I hope and I strive, and I don't want to say hope. I will see see how I changed my my lingo there. Um, I will have a house in Oahu, in Hawaii. My wife and I were lucky enough to go there for a honeymoon, and I fell in love with Hawaii. I've been to the Caribbean, I've been to Mexico, I've never been to Hawaii until that moment. And when we stepped foot in Hawaii, man, it was a magical, magical place. It's just. The, I don't know if it's the, ocean, the fresh ocean breezes or whatever it is, it's really just hit to my core. So I have pictures of Hawaii, I have pictures of my family, I have pictures of things that I want in my life, physical, material things, such as I kind of, well, I, I want to buy an airplane, not a big one, not a big jet, but I want to learn how to fly. Uh, that's on there. Um, other things that I want to do, I want to go to the Super Bowl with my dad. Um, what else do I have on there? I, I have going out to Yosemite again uh, with the family. I have hanging out in California in a condo um, overlooking the ocean because my my best friend uh, Jordan, he was on the podcast, lives out in California. I love it out there. It's an amazing place. I have materialistic things. I have certain watches that I like. I, I'm a watch guy. I have certain cars that I have on my vision board too because you know I'm a big Corvette guy and it, and it keeps me... Focus. Now, you might be thinking, Jake, well, that's all materialistic. You should just be thankful for what you have and all that stuff. And very, very true. There is not one moment I'm not grateful for the, the things that I have in my life. But I do enjoy certain things. I'm into certain moments. And I want to create that again in my life. And the way to do that is to remind myself of the, the, where I want to go. And that is the, the cause of a vision board. And yours can be totally different. Yours could be opening a rescue. Yours could be, uh, you know... He's giving back to older people, older generations, starting a cause for veterans, whatever it is that you really find that pulse <laughs> and now thinking about all these charities and, and doing nice things, man, I think mine is maybe a little self-centered, but per personally, I think that's okay. It's okay to be self-centered and it's actually kind of awkward to tell you what is on my vision board because I feel embarrassed to say like, I, I want a Rolex, I want a Corvette, you know, I want a house in Oahu, you know, I want all these kind of materialistic things and I believe that's okay. I believe it's okay to be selfish because I know that I'm providing and giving and inspiring great people like yourselves out there. So I think it's okay for me to want certain things for myself. And um, 
and and sometimes we don't give ourselves that those moments. So if you are embarrassed from your vision board, you don't have to put it out in public. You could keep it on the backdrop of your phone, put it on the backdrop of your computer, or even just fold it up and bring it out once a day. You need to bring out something to remind you of the person that you want to become and remind you of the, uh, the things that you want to acquire in your life. The things, the experiences, the moments, the happiness, the joyful. And of course, in my vision board, there's family and trips and, and wonderful things of, of enjoying moments of talking with you guys personally and, and giving back to the local community of Milwaukee and giving back to fire departments and all that stuff. There's a lot of other jazz on there. I focus on the materialistic stuff. But nonetheless, that is my vision board. I suggest that you start one. It doesn't have to be big or large or whatever. Start with one picture. You know, maybe it's just looking at the, it's overlooking the ocean. Maybe that just drives you out like nuts and you just can't wait. Then then put your, you know, put that somewhere that you can see it every day and to remind you of the, the places you want to go, the experiences you want and the person that you need to become to achieve that. Now, happy, you know, having a, condo overlooking the beach doesn't necessarily mean that you need to start a business and create a million dollars, but it means that you need to find happiness within the, the moments around you. You know, that's on a deeper level, but give it a try and, and see what happens. The second is goals. Goals is, geez, we could have a whole podcast on goals. I have a five-year goal that I set this past year. I've never set a big five-year goal, um, but it, it's really helped me focus on where where directly I need to go to become the person that I need to become. I have grand visions for myself to become a very popular public speaker in the realm of personal change. And why is that? Because it's not fame driven. It's not that I want the cash. It's because I know that you and there's multiple other people out there and myself that need this information to really head home, to really just feel good about themselves. And in a world full of negativity, in a world filled with advertisements and just silliness on Facebook and all those social media sites, I am driven to help people see past the clutter to focus on them true selves. And my five-year goal is very grand, and I don't want to say my five-year goal publicly, and the reason is, is because science has proven that once you start to state a goal of achievement of some kind, your body and mind start to think that you've already achieved it, so you're not going to push as hard as you once could. Now, has that ever happened to you? You tell everybody, yep, Monday I'm quitting smoking, I'm doing it, everybody, woo, and everybody's like, yeah, go, cool, awesome, <sighs> And then, you know, by Friday, you, you started smoking. But you didn't tell anybody because you kind of felt embarrassed about it. Or the same with the diet. Or say with, you know, working out or whatever it is. Or starting a business. Or you got this great invention and I'm going to bring it to market. And you never do anything because your body thinks and your mind thinks that you've already done it. So, so why keep working on it? If you really want to achieve something, I suggest you keep it personal. But the bad thing about putting it personal is that who's going to hold you accountable? So that is why... I always write mine in hand, my, my big vision goals, and I paste it somewhere in the house that I'm always at. I'm always at my computer, of course, doing podcasts and, and doing things online. And above my computer, I have that, that scene, that quote, that goal that really helps me focus in. And also, too, just FYI, my goals are just not one-liners of I want to have a house in Hawaii. My goal is more of a one-page synopsis of who the person, who am I going to be in five years, what am I going to have, what am I going to be doing, and what is it that I need to do to get to these locations. So it's a very upbeat, inspired, which I call it, uh, sane song, you know, just big pipe paper filled with a lot of great information to keep me focused on the person that I need to become to get there. So hopefully that helps for you. And of course, I, I plan on speaking more about goals because that's something we all all need to um, share and uh, and kind of get down. So if you have a specific question, again, text me and uh, hopefully I can um, in, in bring it on the podcast for you. And the last one, or actually two more. Uh, this one's from Chelsea. She's from Seattle. She suggests that we should all go to the Landmark Forum. Landmark Forum. Uh, it is a national company that kind of has uh, day seminars on different things. Goal setting, relationships, all different types of stuff. I've had multiple friends go to these. They say they're really good. They say they're really empowering. If you're looking to dip your toe into a seminar or a conference of some kind, check out Landmark Forum. 
from. And I think they're almost in every city. And they're going to be on the weekends. And uh, give it a try. Check it out. See if you like it. Um, they're on all different topics, business, uh, personal development, everything like that. If it strives with you, if it works out time-wise, invest the money. It's it's kind of cheap, around 50 bucks, I want to say. Some of them are more. Some of them I know are a couple hundred dollars, like two, three hundred dollars. But again, though, you're getting legit information. It's not some scammy person that is going to make you buy all these additional things at the end. So um, give it a try. T- take a look. Um, that's from Chelsea. Uh, thank you very much for that suggestion. Uh, because again, we're a team, right? And if somebody has a really good idea, a part of the team... I'm going to put it out there because there's some of you that it may connect with and there's some of you that it may not connect with. So give it a try, look it up, and at least just read about it. And the last one is from my man Alex. He's from Miami, Florida. And um, he had a couple of uh, questions and I'm just kind of focusing on uh, sales. He's He started his own company and he's looking to enhance his own brand a little bit more, connect with people a little more. And a big hang up that he has is connecting with individuals that he's already called. So say Alex calls me, he, we talk about his business, he talks about all the great things he can do for me, we hang up. It, it ended good, it's not like a sour ending or anything like that, but a couple weeks go by and Alex wants to contact me again, he feels that, man, he just doesn't know what else to say, you know, he, he feels kind of lost. And to be honest, sales is something that we all deal with on a daily basis. It doesn't matter if you're selling, if you're a parent, if you're just an individual that's representing a company, we are all in sales truly every single day of our life. So here are two ideas that I've acquired uh, through my time through the podcast and talking with some pretty crazy people when it comes to sales. Um, Number one is uh, build rapport, right? I think we can all understand that, of connecting with somebody. If Alex knew that I loved hockey, hopefully Alex would be like, oh, hey, Jake, you know, you've been skating lately or anything like that. That's called building rapport. And I'd be like, no, I haven't, Alex. Do you skate? He'd be like, no, but I took my children skating the other day. And man, were we falling all over the place, but it was a great time. And now him and I have a connection. Him and I are building rapport with each other. So not only was he trying to pitch me some ideas from his business, but now that I know that Alex has a family, he's he went skating, he's not good at it, but he tried it and he loved it, allows me to now kind of link a little bit, link a little bit further than just the general business transaction. So that is the first one. Build rapport with people. If you don't know where to start a conversation, figure out what the heck they're interested in. Every single person in the world is interested in something. I don't know what it is for everybody. That's where you have to dig. And somebody said there are no... Um, the person that you're talking to, if they're boring, it's not because they are boring, it's because you're asking boring questions. You know, how are you? Good. The weather's crazy. Yeah. Well, did you eat today? Yeah. You know, where are you going? Chicago. Cool. You know, no, no, no. You know, ask the deeper questions. Ask good questions. See what's going on with these individuals. Connect with them. Build rapport. And even if you don't know anything about that subject, say somebody is into football and you're into dance and you don't care about football at all, act interested. You know, just be like, oh, you know, yeah, so who's your team? You know, I mean, there's general things that we can ask. And ask a silly question. If you don't know, like, ask them. Ask them to open up. Because once they start talking about something that they enjoy, truly, they're going to open up like a book. And the three things that people, or the one thing that people really love talking about is themselves. So if it has to relate to something that they enjoy, they will talk about it all day long. You talk to me about podcasting, man, I'll talk your ear off. You talk to me about personal development, man, I'll talk your ear off. But the thing is, is that we need to build rapport with each other. You can't just ask a question and be not interested. You have to ask a genuine question and be genuinely interested. And that is how we kind of connect with each other. The second is, is kind of being different. Um, When it comes to sales and everything like that, being different is obviously very unique. And and especially in today's day and age, we're bombarded with phone calls, emails, texts, uh, updates on social media about things that we should buy, see, do, right? The one thing, though, that nobody can replicate is connecting. Again, kind of going off the rapport, is connecting with each other. Not making it a sales transaction, but legitly just calling somebody up and seeing how they're doing. I know it sounds ridiculous, sounds absolutely absurd, but I have a couple of real estate properties, and these in their college students that rent for me. These college students, of course, are not gonna call their landlord until they move out, right? But I call them every so often just to see how they're doing. I don't ask anything about the apartment. I don't ask, is there, are there holes? Do you guys have a big party? Are there cops over? Did they break down the doors? I don't ask that because I genuinely call them just to connect with them. And you know what happens at the end of the conversation? They tell me about all the things that are going on with the apartment because they think like I'm calling and oh my gosh, he wants to see are the lights burnt out or did we break something or whatever. No, you know, 
know, how's college? Good. You know, you know, what your what your parents, you know, you miss your parents, you're a little homesick, you know, that's a big transaction. Moving away from home, you know, your first time, you know, what do you think of the neighborhood? You know, by the way, here's some great restaurants you should go and check out with, you know, your, your buddies. It's cheap, it's really good food, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm building rapport with these kids. All right, see how it comes back to <laughs> building rapport. Um, you're connecting with these kids and you're being different because they're expecting, oh shoot, it's landlord calling. Are we late on rent? Blah, blah, blah. No, he's just genuinely connecting. That's being different. I know it sounds absolutely absurd, but truly that's something that you should you should try and um, and it will help you further your connection with these individuals. So I guess there's not really two steps to the, the sales for me. It's number one, building rapport and then number two, uh, just being different, you know, connecting, just, just genuinely be interested in these individuals. So that is it for today. Truly, Awesome questions. I appreciate you guys texting me. If you have more questions, text me a question. Kind of a unique format. I don't know if anybody else is doing it, but uh, text me, 414-550-4012, and I will try my best to get you on here and answer your question for you. Um, From uh, Ronald, Chrissy, Chelsea, and Alex, thank you very much for the questions. I hope that you, the listener, found value in these questions. Again, send me a text message, call me, whatever, 414-550-4012. Of course, course, you can use email, send me an email, jake at operationselfreset.com. And if you are looking to connect with me a little deeper, you need to head over to operation operationselfreset.com. And there on the homepage, sign up for the email list and um, you can connect with me. Um, soon here, I'm, I'm building a couple of things in the background. And if you want to get be a part of our tribe, be a part of our team, go over to operationselfreset.com and sign up to the email list, and um, you will be notified of all the great things that are coming out of Operation Self Reset. So I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. Truly, you are taking time out of your busy schedule, your busy day, your busy week to inspire, to motivate yourself, and I tip my hat to you. I salute you. Thank you very much for joining me on this podcast, and hopefully I'll catch you next week, Wednesday, for another great episode. And again, if um, you want to give back to me and pour some value back into me, the only thing I ask you to do is um, go out there and spread Operation Self Reset. That's all. Just talk talk to people about it, tell them about it, email them, uh, whatever. Uh, That's all. Or if you don't, that's fine too. If you're like, I don't want to sell, Jake. You know, I don't want to do that. That's fine too. Not a problem. I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. I would just uh, appreciate... um, you guys extending the reach a little bit but nonetheless thank you again we'll catch you next week wednesday for another great episode of operation self reset